Welcome to Longboat Wave, your wide area virtual ecosystem. The evolution of network convergence we've now talked about lays the foundation for the solutions covered in the Longboat Wave portfolio. We will start with a quick discussion around MPLS. An MPLS cloud is simply an interconnected network of network routers which communicate with your edge router. It is also self-healing, so if any of the network routers fail, the network simply reroutes around the failure. With your MPLS service, you receive a router at your location along with remote network monitoring so that you can securely and reliably deliver voice, video, and data across the enterprise. So what are the key takeaways with MPLS? It is a simple, unified architecture. It is the predominant network protocol for today's voice, video, and data service. It is low cost and easy to scale, and it provides for quality of service which guarantees the needed performance to support real-time protocols such as voice and video conferencing. Now let's look at SIP and SIP trunking. SIP, or Session Initiation Protocol, is the most widely used means to route voice over IP calls and emulate calling features we're used to. So what is a SIP trunk exactly? A SIP trunk is a logical and centralized IP replacement of a traditional, physical, and regionalized TDM, or Time Division Multiplexing Circuit. Utilizing SIP trunks over MPLS allows you to eliminate local analog PRI and T1 lines used for voice traffic, and virtual SIP trunking allows you to better allocate capacity across your network, thereby significantly reducing network costs often by 40 to 50 percent. And we're going to see how that's done. So taking the same MPLS network design we looked at previously, we're going to add the end office switch voice switches at the remote locations which are predominantly used today to support local and long distance calls over the public switch telephone network. Here you see a lot of expensive hardware to buy and maintain along with costly local voice circuits. These voice circuits have to be over allocated to support smaller populations at the edge of your network. After all, a small 10 person sales office can sometimes experience times when most, if not all, of the staff members are on the phone at the same time. Overall, however, the company may never have more than 50% of their trunks utilized at any given time, especially when you consider companies with offices located across multiple time zones. Now let's see what happens to the network when we add virtual SIP trunking. SIP trunks are brought into a central switch in the cloud, eliminating the need for local loop T1 or PRI circuits. You retain all of your local DIDs and PBX extensions, and calls are routed over IP to gateways across over 8,000 rate centers nationally, which through a SIP to SS7 signaling gateway, deliver local calls to the public switch telephone network. The same logic you've likely used to decide to route calls over your wide area network can now be used again to decide to make calls anywhere in the country to the public switch telephone network. You need to pay for far fewer SIP trunks than you pay for local TDM trunks today and require none of the expensive hardware at each endpoint. That equates to significant financial savings and a big savings in time spent on maintenance and support of the current phone system hardware. That switch you saw in the cloud which brought in the SIP trunks, that is a carrier grade hosted version of what you have today. Let's look at the case for hosted versus on-premise solutions. So how much does a PBX cost? Well, there's the hardware and software purchase, there's the annual maintenance contracts, the software updates, internal labor, and then there's the cost of regularly outgrowing the inflexible on-premise solution. That equates to intensive capital and operational expense. Regardless of the business case for virtualizing your voice and unified communication services, not everyone is ready to make the full leap to a cloud-based architecture. This is where our solution really shines. You may wish to slowly migrate locations as it makes sense to do so. A potential solution may exist where the headquarters location is completely hosted but the newly acquired regional office just invested in a switching platform six months ago. For the regional office, an emulated PRI can be provisioned. You can take full advantage of SIP trunking without upgrading the switch and be on the same enterprise dial plan as the headquarters location. 
At the remote office, a SIP trunk would be allocated over the broadband connection. Benefits of SIP are delivered corporate-wide, whether you are ready to go completely virtual or not. All offices are part of the same corporate voice network and have access to the productivity-enhancing features that increase accessibility. All the while, the radical cost benefits of managed MPLS and SIP services are yours to monetize. What are the main takeaways from hosted voice services? Well, you have lower demand on IT resources. You dramatically reduce CapEx. Legacy switch integration with SIP is easy. And it's easy to scale, which adds up to a lot of value. Now let's look at unified communications. Unified communications, or UC, means a lot of different things. At a very base level, UC enables one number for each person, wherever they happen to be, and on their choice of device. UC also offers powerful business tools on the fly, such as audio and video conferencing, web conferencing, instant messaging, the ability to see and report user presence information, and provides fax and voicemail management capabilities. Through presence reporting, you gain better access to others, and others can see how you would prefer to be reached, such as by email, instant message, or phone call. A simple but powerful application within the UC suite of services is visual voicemail. What a great way to save time after long periods of being away from your phone. There are many more collaborative tools within the UC universe, but just imagine how nice it would be from a single interface, use any mix of communication mediums, and keep a record of the dialogue, be it voice, instant message, or email. It's not an email string, but a communication string you can use to track your ongoing discussions. Here's where it gets really good. Let's look at mobile integration. So knowing what we know about how corporate networks look today, let's explore a question. If you could redesign your enterprise landline voice network with a multitude of individual analog POTS lines and no centralized call control, would that be a good idea? Not likely. So why are your mobile phones set up in such a way? What if your mobile devices were seamlessly integrated with your enterprise voice network? What advantages would that bring? You would gain the same control companies have felt is vital to business operation up to this point. We've just learned to tolerate the non-centralized nature of wireless voice communications. The secret to effectively integrating mobile phones into your enterprise voice architecture is IMS, or IP Multimedia Subsystem. IMS enables a carrier to understand your SIP call routing information and switch the call for you, using the carrier's infrastructure instead of your own. It also enables the carrier to relay important information about your call, such as displaying your corporate DID or phone number instead of your cell phone number when making mobile calls, without impacting your PBX or network resources. Let's see IMS in action. Let's see how a unified communications architecture might look like without IMS in the network. In this scenario, a customer is placing a call to his sales rep, whose company just upgraded their PBX and added a UC server. When the customer calls, the call is routed through the public switch telephone network to the sales rep's corporate IP PBX. The sales rep's UC presence states that she is on her cell phone so the call routes back out through another port on the switch, engaging two channels on the company's local access trunks. Even with SIP trunks, this call requires twice the amount of bandwidth and extra resources from the company's VoIP platform. Adding all of your company's mobile calls would likely require a big upgrade in capacity. Now let's see how IMS plays a part. We're going to add in a unified border element that communicates SIP signaling to the wireless carrier's IMS network at the company's communication center. The same call routes to the PSTN, and since the wireless carrier is also the MPLS provider, it receives the handoff from the public switch telephone network. The wireless carrier recognizes the phone number as a mobile integration customer and simply sends 8 kilobytes of signaling data to the corporate voice over IP server. Again, the user's presence states that the sales rep is on her cell phone, 
and the wireless carrier routes the call directly to the sales rep without any real impact to the corporate network. What about using your wireless PDA data plan to make voice calls? So what are the requirements for mobile voice over IP? Well, first of all, you have to have low latency, under 50 milliseconds, and that is supported by 4G wireless, LTE or WiMAX, and Wi-Fi service. You also have to have available bandwidth, which again is supported by 4G or Wi-Fi, and then you must have a signaling gateway and a media gateway and a soft switch which there are many solutions for available in the industry. Uh, finally you must have a SIP client on the handset itself and there are very few enterprise class options and we feel we offer the best one. When we say fixed mobile convergence many people understand that to be placing mobile voice over IP calls using a SIP client in an IP PBX uh, on the company Wi-Fi network or on a cellular 4G network. In this case you can place international calls leveraging the rates that you've negotiated with your landline provider and it requires no cellular airtime charges. When we add an FMC appliance or fixed mobile convergence appliance we gain voice call continuity which enables a seamless handoff between Wi-Fi and cellular networks. Utilizing mobile voice over IP gives us cheaper international calls. We pay no mobile airtime costs when we're in a Wi-Fi or 4G data area and we also gain the ability to use PDAs instead of desk phones for those employees that are somewhat mobile. With the SIP client on the mobile device we also gain full PBX integration all of those SIP calling features are now available on the mobile device. Let's take a look at how we manage cost allocation, inventory, and policy across both landline and mobile services. The management platform we use consolidates all carrier services on a single platform. It provides inventory and asset management, invoice management, bill auditing, mobile and fixed communications requisition, mobility management, mobile device and plan knowledge base, incredibly in-depth reporting, help desk professional services, and HR integration. We encourage you to see a demo of this platform, even if only to better manage your current network. Cloud architectures offer clear redundancy and disaster recovery benefits. Let's take a look at those now. While voice services can be rerouted to mobile devices and alternate end office locations, what about data services? Using wireless for network backup has become an easy choice. Here we see an end office location sending and receiving data over its primary MPLS circuit. When a local construction project cuts the primary circuit, data automatically reroutes over the wireless broadband connection, in this case a 4G WiMAX connection through a mobile broadband router. Both services can be delivered by the same carrier and in times of tra heavy traffic you can leverage the wireless connection for load balancing. In terms of cost, wireless is the perfect option for backup, especially considering it is a separate mode of transport, providing a smaller chance that it would be down in the event of a construction problem or router failure. You also gain the benefit of state-of-the-art data centers with fully redundant facilities, keeping your business running at all times. Dynamic rerouting of calls for circuit or premise router failures are inherent to the network management design. Today we saw that the foundation to the new network is MPLS. With SIP and SIP trunking, you gain amazing cost savings and call routing benefits. IMS then finally brings your mobile users into your enterprise voice environment, which becomes highly effective and powerful with a suite of unified communication services awaiting you. And all of this can be deployed in the cloud, which lowers your total cost of ownership while at the same time increases productivity, accessibility, and customer satisfaction. So how do you get started? So contact us today. We would love to know how we can help you achieve your goals. Email us at info at longboatmobility.com or you can call between the hours of 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time at 877 
3996. Thank you for sharing your time with us today.